Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends and welcome back to the path to the Vittorio Veneto. Today we're on tier 4 which can mean only one thing. We're looking at the tier 4 Italian battleship Cavour. So with that being said let's get into our commander. You know we're running Azure Lane Littorio. We are also using Sharnhorst and Palo de Revel. Now, as spoken yesterday in the first video, if you do not have these commanders, I highly recommend the um, base commander, which is Angelo Lacino. Uh, if you guys have him, if you don't, Palo de Revel is the brawler build. Um, so he's available also as a base commander. And then I, I even, I, I forget who the base commander is for. I think it'd be Inigo Campioni here or Inigo, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if he's the, uh, the base commander or not, but, uh, but yeah, so personally, I run Azure Lane Littorio, um, that's just my personal preference, I like, I like to be able to hit the targets, um, you can run the, uh, Lachino as well, he's also a dispersion build commander, uh, so that, that is also a, an option for you, um, but anyway, let's get into the upgrades. We are running Aiming Systems Mod 1. We are fully upgraded. Uh, I still haven't added my flags to all my ships, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we are running the Type 3 Camo, which is a minus 3% and plus 3% buff for our uh, detectability and our dispersion. Um, well, I say our dispersion. The enemy's incoming dispersion when they shoot at us. Okay, keep that in mind. We do have four heals with this build and three secondary targeting boosters, uh, which is always nice. Survivability, 38,700 hit points with a 16% torpedo damage reduction. She has 305 millimeter, 46 caliber Vickers tourney uh, turrets. You have two dual turrets and th three triple turrets. I didn't realize we had three triple turrets of those. But we definitely have two dual turrets, and those are at the front. Um, I'll show you those, uh, front and rear. So I'll check those out for you. Uh, firing range, 15.9 kilometers with this build. Keep in mind, this thing is actually a, a dispersion build, meaning I should have a little bit more range. Reload time, though, pretty solid at 25.5 seconds. 180 degree turn time, getting better, but still not preferable at 40 seconds. So you may want to buff a little bit of the turret traverse if that's something you, you struggle with. Uh, personally, I'm so used to using really slow turrets that I, I don't have a problem using the, the agility of the ship to turn the turrets when I need to. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, HE shell maximum damage 4200 with a 30% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage of 8900 dead. Sorry. Uh, secondary armament, 120 millimeter, 50 caliber Vickers 1909. You get 18 of those, reaching out to 3.7 kilometers, reloading in three seconds, and shooting SAP with a maximum damage of 2,800. Remember, SAP secondaries cannot cause fires. Okay. AA defense, slightly better than the previous tier, but still basically non-existent. You have 37 millimeter, 54 caliber Breda 1939. You get eight of those doing 71 damage per second, reaching out to three and a half kilometers. Then you have the 76 millimeter, 40 caliber, and Saldo 1917s. You get six of those doing 13 damage per second, reaching out to just three kilometers. So keep that in mind. Very close in AA, and you don't have much of it. Maneuverability maximum speed is just 19.8 knots, making it feel very, very much like the, uh, the old dreadnoughts. Uh, the, other, the other one, the Tier 3, kind of feels more like a battlecruiser. This one definitely feels like a dreadnought at that 19 km, or 19 knot range. However, turning circle is still very good at 620 meters. And the rudder shift, while it is a little bit slower than the previous tier, is still... Well, that's annoying. Let's try that again. Shall we? I like how it said connection loss, check your internet. My internet's fine, Wargaming. That's on your end. I can't remember the last time I disconnected from from the game, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, anyway, back into what we were talking about. Um, yeah, rudder shift 12.6 seconds. Still better than a lot of battleships, but not, not as good as it was. So keep that in mind. 
Concealment. Detectability by air or by sea is 12.7. Detectability by air is 10.4. Guaranteed is always two. And the detectability while firing in smoke is 10 kilometers, which is pretty good for a battleship. Armor. This is one of the strengths of these ships. I mean, they do actually have some good armor. You have 85 millimeters to 130 millimeters of armor at the bow, and it is a full wraparound bow. Um, it still can be overmatched from the front. You can see that 19 millimeters right there at the, the front of the ship. All you got to do is aim deck line, just like all of the other tier fours. Uh, everything at tier four can overmatch other tier fours. So keep that in mind. Uh, the only the only exemption to that rule is the Peter Veliki because it is the only one that has an entire bow that is not overmatchable. Everybody else has either an icebreaker bow like this, where they have the extra armor at the bow, but you can aim deck line and go through, or they have just a wide open bow like the Americans and you can go straight through it. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now, that being said, it is a very small patch, and most people don't know that it exists. Like, most people just say, oh, you can't overmatch this thing, because they, they're used to shooting at the waterline. So you will bounce a lot of people's shells just because of that. And any angling whatsoever, and you can see, the, the side angle, or the side plating on this thing is fantastic. So any angling whatsoever, you're going to be pretty okay, okay? Uh, but you can see those twin turrets up top, and you can see the triple turrets down on the uh, bottom, as well as in the middle of the ship. So I guess I, I, I did know it had a triple turret. I just didn't think about it in the center of the ship. Uh, but yeah. So ends up with a pretty solid broadside with a 13-gun uh, salute. So not bad. Not bad. You get 10, 10 guns over the bow and the, the stern. Well, I say 10 guns. You get 5 guns over the bow, 5 guns over the stern, and 3 guns in the middle. So up to a 13-gun salute if you get a broadside. All right. Let's take it away and look at the uh, turtleback armor, shall we? Once again, just like uh, her predecessor, she does have a turtleback armor scheme. You can see it overlapping the citadel. So meaning if you get caught broadside at, at closer ranges inside 10 kilometers, you're less likely to be citadeled. Um, and with your solid bow side plating, you also aren't as likely to be pushed, punched through the bow side plating and into the citadel that way. So. It is a very solidly armored ship for what it is. If it wasn't just for the fact that the guns just troll the crap out of me, I would actually probably enjoy these. And as you can see, it's got a basically submerged citadel, um, and it, it's a it's a solid citadel. I mean, you're you're struggling to citadel these lower tier uh, Italians for sure. That doesn't mean you're not going to blap the crap out of them. If they give you a broadside, it's it's fully possible to hit them for twenty to 30,000 damage in a good salvo. Just like most other ships, if you get caught broadside, you get punched. Um, these are no different. The difference is you're not citadeling people, meaning one shell isn't doing 10,000 damage at the tier. Okay? So guns of plenty, high number of guns, allows for a lot of damage from a single salvo, but frail, below average base HP rating. Despite her amazing armor scheme, she does have a, you know, mediocre HP pool. Cavour, a representative of the first series of Italian dreadnoughts, as with many large ships of the Italian Navy at the beginning of the 20th century, she had an almost symmetrical silhouette. The battleship's main armament comprised 13 305 millimeter guns she entered service in 1915 there were three of them in the series and honestly i do like the look of this ship a lot i really do um you've got those i'm assuming torpedo net screens on the side you got those outriggers i think that's torpedo nets there that you can just extend and, and drop into the water to kind of protect you while you're at harbor at um you know anchor but uh i like the star on the bow as well but, I mean, with this camo especially, she just looks good, man. For an old dreadnought, she looks real good. And you know I love me some good old-fashioned casemates. And this thing has them all. Has all the casemates. It's just something about it, man. It just screams battleship to me. But, uh, yeah, definitely a good-looking battleship. Definitely enjoy it uh, in terms of, you know, just the way it moves through the water. Uh, it's, it's very familiar. Again, if it wasn't for the fact that the guns just decide that they don't want to hit a lot of times. Uh, I would definitely enjoy the Italians a lot more than I do. But with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on straight and we're going to spawn in the center of the map. Now, 
I tend to get a little aggressive. I don't know if you guys know that about me, but I tend to be probably one of the most aggressive battleship captains on the planet, which is why when I'm in a tier four ship and I'm under tiered into a tier five lobby, even with a carrier, I kind of just go straight at the enemy here. I kind of treat these low tier games a lot like AI battles, in which case my goal is to simply overmatch the entire enemy team faster than they can uh, knock me out. Okay, I don't intend to survive these most of the time. I just intend to do as much as I can in as short amount of time as possible. So I will usually put myself in a position where I am definitely overextended. And what ends up resulting is some pretty entertaining low tier gameplay. And this will be no, ex or no uh, exception to that rule. So right off the bat, we're going to go straight forward. Again, this is a carrier match. But... Let's be honest, most times at lower tiers, like, the players just don't know what they're doing. And honestly, that translates to higher tiers a lot of times, too. Uh, despite me being a potato, I tend to do pretty well. Uh, but we're going to push forward and watch the, the guy that gets spotted on the left side of the map. I believe there are two people that get spotted on the left side of the map. Yep, there they are. We got a land Leander, and we have a battleship, and there's another cruiser back there, which I believe is a French cruiser. Now, we take a shot, auto-aimed, little bit of adjustment after getting the, the rough course laid in, and right off the bat, we smack that Leander for half his health. No Citadel, but good, solid hit. 10,000 damage, you'll love to see it. Throwing that many shells downrange, it's just a matter of time before somebody gets hurt. And, uh... Speaking of getting hurt, that Laga over there is about to have a bad time. Wait for it. Come on, here they come. Bunk. <laughs> Texas says hello, and Laga goes home. Uh, or in this case, I guess, doesn't go home. But we took another shot at that Leander just as he went into the smoke screen. Probably should have shot just a little bit sooner. I thought I was going to have a little bit longer to take the shot, but uh, I think we goofed it just a little bit. Timing, not quite there. But uh, we do hit him with one overpin, which is nothing. Let's be honest, it's 1,300 damage, roughly. Uh, and you can see we've got his attention. He wants to shoot back at us, but because we're not currently spotted, he can't shoot us. And... Uh, the next thing that you're going to notice is the battleship that's over there is a Durflinger. And this Durflinger has decided it wants to just YOLO in. Now, remember, the British, or the British, the German battle cruisers do not get torpedoes at early tiers. In fact, they don't get torpedoes until, like, tier 6. So, the fact that this Durflinger is kind of just YOLO in, it's not going to end well for him over there. Why? Because I have put myself in a position where I am in a perfect place to counter him with a beautiful crossfire. Now, obviously, we've got to wait a little bit before that becomes a thing. We smacked the New York the first shot, and the second shot, after he fires at us, uh, we get nothing. Uh, and that's just, you know, good old-fashioned Italian accuracy at its finest. But uh, Durflinger comes out around the corner, and this guy's completely oblivious to the fact that we exist. Had he actually paid attention to us, he could have probably blapped the crap out of us, if not just outright killed us. Uh, but fortunately for us, he's not paying attention to us at all, and we're about to expose the fact that we can overmatch him by shooting high into, uh, you know, the superstructure. Don't get a very good shot that first shot, um, to be honest. Dude's pretty much just flat broadside to everybody on that side of the map. And he is bowing to us, kind of, and slightly angled, but he's done. We got a nice little chunk off of him, and he's gonna be gone. Um, again... Just deciding to go yellow in and then turn full broadside to people is never going to be a good idea. It just doesn't end well for you. Uh, that being said, New York has also found out that he can punch through my bow if he aims high, so we've got to be careful here. And we don't want to go broadside to the New York, because we know how that ends. Uh, American AP slaps. So we initially stay kind of bow in, slightly angled here, trying to get the New York to shoot at a little bit of our belt if we can, or if he just shoots waterline, we'll be fine. And that's when the tier five battleship shows up, and that is the French battleship. So uh, we might be in a little bit of trouble, and you can see a lot of shells missing us, and a lot of shells that do hit us do nothing. So we're completely fine there. New York still over angled a little bit, but unfortunately, we're not getting any accuracy out of our front guns. And it was at this point that I decide I'm going to go ahead and open up and try to get the rear guns involved. And I'm also cognizant of the fact there are three people that have made it through the right side. So I've got to pay attention to that. Now, the carrier is coming over to help with uh, the cruiser that's next to me, which I believe is a Graf Spee. We are still working on the New York at this point. We want to aim a little bit further back, get through that uh, rear side plating, and there we get a nice chunk out of him. 
and you can see he's not long for this world. Like he's just he's getting chewed apart. He's got me and a Graf Spi who's both punching right right into him. Uh, no problem. And then on top of that, our carrier, I think, is trying to hit him as well. Um, but the Normandy has put himself in a position to be a problem for me. Uh, and I'm also paying attention to the right side, and here's where the torpedo bombers actually spot the Leander coming. I was worried that this would happen, and uh, sure enough, we are ready for it. And like I said, these turrets are not nearly as slow as the previous ship's turrets which means we can easily turn them to the right, prepare for see, this. You can see the torpedoes coming. We're just gonna slow down, turn in, use that fantastic agility, and then when we have a clear shot, we take it, and unfortunately, Leander survives. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to see the SAP secondaries in their, in their like, natural environment. Look at those things go. Light cruiser, we've got the, the booster running. Unfortunately, Fuso, out of nowhere, comes in and cleans up. Uh, but you can see torpedoes coming. Again, no one, no one is caught off guard by those. We saw them coming, and we're able to turn in and avoid them. No problem. Now here, I'm not going to lie. I was expecting this Normandy to be tearing me up. He has a very good look at us. He's a tier 5 battleship. He's got lots of guns. He could easily rip me apart. However, he's so focused on shooting the Graf Spee that he really does not care that I exist. Um, and I was caught off guard, I'm not going to lie. I was very much expecting this guy to shoot me here. I've got a lot of hit points, I'm easy for him. Like, he should have no trouble doing significant damage to us with a tier 5 battleship. But, again, you never look a gift horse in the mouth. Which is a great saying from the old days, that if you understand where it comes from, it's kind of, uh, kind of awesome. But, at the same time... What it means is, basically, if the enemy's making a mistake, why, like, why get upset about it? Like, just do what you gotta do, and, and make him pay. And that's what we're gonna do. Now, here you can see, I checked the position of the enemy battleships. Could have locked my guns there, probably should have locked my guns there before I looked. But, uh, checking where they're at, I realized that I've got plenty of room to work with. Um, the Normandy is now going to turn away slightly, which is going to open up the angle. We're going to wait for it and see if we can get a nice shot into the upper side plating here. We don't want to shoot the belt. We want to shoot higher, and we get a nice solid hit, 11,000 damage. And also, Fuso manages to punch him as well. Um, you can see, unfortunately, the, the graph did go down, and Normandy is more focused on the Fuso who he's sailing broadside to, than the tier 4 battleship that's in front of him, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, and he's stumbled within range of our secondaries once again. So we're going to be able to see if the secondaries, the SAP secondaries, can do anything against this Normandy. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that it takes a little while for these things to finally kick off. There they go. But uh, once they do, you can see we are getting some damage. It's not a lot, but it is noticeable. And uh, we've got shots in the air. Are we going to get the freaking secondary kill on a battleship? Come on. Oh, he's healing. He's healing. You can see I'm starting to turn away. I want to angle away from him here. Because I'm expecting him to turn his guns to us. We just took all of his health. He does not manage to turn his guns to us. He's actually still going away from us. And Fuso, unfortunately, manages to finish him off before we can get our guns loaded to finish him off. Now, we're going to try to grab this cap. We're in, in the perfect place to capture this cap. And to the Fuso's credit, he did the right thing. He went straight across and grabbed the, the Delta cap. This is stuff that ba like battleships don't do at higher tiers. You never see, other than me, you almost never see battleships grabbing caps at higher tiers. And I don't understand why. It's just like battleship commanders are like, Oh, I can't be bothered to be anywhere where I could actually be useful. I gotta sit at maximum range and fire at everything that moves from as far away as possible. Lest I scratch my ship. And uh, at lower tiers, you get a lot more people that are actually in more useful positions uh, more often than not. And here we catch this Durflinger completely off guard. He had no idea we were in a good position. We smack him pretty good. We're at 99,000 damage at tier 4. Like, this is a solid game at tier 4. Like, you, you gotta love it. I mean, anytime you're breaking 100,000 damage at tier 4, tier 5, it's a great game. Um, now, obviously, at tier 5 and up, you start getting 150 plus games uh, in terms of, like, your, your damage output, but... Still, here we get a nice kill on the Durflinger and pick up our high caliber. And that leaves us at 105,000 damage. And on the horizon, we spot another Kavor. 
So, let's test out our own armor piercing against a ship of the exact same design. Ah, oh, crap. Unfortunately, the game ends. We went on points. But uh, let me know what you guys thought. I, I actually enjoyed this one a little bit. 105,000 damage, top of the leaderboard, 2,000 base XP, and a tier 4. That's solid. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.